nearly 200 missiles fired from Iran. The target? Israel. It's Tehran's biggest military assault on the Jewish state. Look at this video when a missile hit a target in Tel Aviv. The missiles activated sirens across Israel. Millions of residents rushed into underground emergency shelters. For the first time ever, Iran used hypersonic missiles that could bypass Israeli radars due to their incredible speed. Hypersonic missiles can fly anywhere from 5 to 25 times the speed of sound, or simply 15,000 kilometers per hour. They have a range of 300 to 2,000 kilometers, making them particularly challenging for air defenses to intercept. Huge explosions shook Israel as some of the missiles hit after bypassing Israeli air defenses. Successful interceptions also caused blasts. Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps said the assault was a retaliation for Israeli killings of militant leaders and aggression in Lebanon against the Iran-backed armed movement Hezbollah and Hamas in Gaza. Iran has vowed to retaliate following Israeli strikes that killed the top leadership of its ally Hezbollah in Lebanon, including the group's leader Hassan Nasrallah, a towering figure in Iran's network of fighters across we the region. Israel and the United States promised to retaliate against Tehran as fears of a wider war intensified. Let's recap and tell you of events that led to Iran taking this step. On the 27th of September 2024, at the United Nations General Assembly, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to continue fighting Hezbollah for as long as it takes, as he put it. Just this week, the IDF destroyed large percentages of Hezbollah's rockets, which had built with Iran's funding for three decades. We took out senior military commanders who not only shed Israeli blood, but American and French blood as well. And then we took out their replacements, and then the replacements of their replacements. And we'll continue degrading Hezbollah until all our objectives are made. Minutes after Netanyahu spoke, blasts rocked the Lebanese capital, Beirut. And the Israeli military said it had struck Hezbollah's headquarters. The attack appeared to target Hezbollah's leader and prompted Israeli PM to cut short his trip to New York. The Israeli military spokesman spelled it out on X that Hassan Nasrallah is dead. Was this the objective Netanyahu was signaling, the killing of Hezbollah's leader? Hezbollah's leader Hassan Nasrallah was killed in an air attack. Nasrallah's death comes as a major blow to Hezbollah which has been hit by a wave of unprecedented attacks in recent weeks. 
the seeming culmination of a series of strikes that began with pager and walkie-talkie attacks to a series of deadly airstrikes. In the years under Nasrallah, Hezbollah grew into a regional force. Nasrallah's death also marks a blow to Iran, whose Revolutionary Guards founded the group in the year 1982. On the 30th of September, fresh airstrikes by Israel in southern Lebanon killed one of Hamas's senior leaders. Fateh Sharif Abu al-Amin was killed along with his wife, son and daughter. Israel also extended its latest round of strikes to Houthi rebels in Yemen's port city of Hodeida. Missile attacks by the rebel group got fierce response. Four people were killed and 29 were injured in the strikes in Yemen on the 29th of September. Iran has relied for decades on Hezbollah and other proxies as its first line of defense. But with the latest attacks, are Iran-backed militias collapsing? On the 1st of October, Israel Defense Force said it had launched a ground invasion into southern Lebanon, targeting Hezbollah's military infrastructure near the border. This followed two weeks of airstrikes intending to neutralize immediate threats. Reports say Israel carried out at least six strikes on southern Beirut. After the Israeli army urged residents in the Hezbollah stronghold to evacuate, Israel has called this incursion the next phase of its war with Hezbollah. This also marks the fourth time that Israeli soldiers have publicly entered Lebanese soil in nearly 50 years and the first since Israel's 34-day war in the country in 2006. Hezbollah denied that IDF soldiers have crossed into the territory. Prime Minister Najib Mikati called this one of the most dangerous phases of its history. As Hezbollah's deputy chief Naim Qasem said, the group is prepared for any challenge. These are visuals of the Israeli army's preparation of what it calls limited localized targeted operations in villages of southern Lebanon against Hezbollah. Despite international calls for de-escalation, Israel has sworn to keep fighting the group and declared a military zone along parts of its border with Lebanon. Then at around 7.30 p.m. Israeli time, on the evening of the 1st of October, Iran retaliated. Iran launched a salvo of ballistic missiles at Israel. Israel activated air defenses against Iran's bombardment, and most missiles were intercepted by Israel and a defensive coalition led by the United States. Hours after the attacks, Iran said it had concluded its action for now, unless the Israeli regime decides to invite further escalation. Just a few months ago in April, Iran launched unprecedented missiles and drones attack in response to an alleged Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. This was the first direct attack on Israel launched from Iran. It marked a new phase in a discord that was simmering for years and spiraled after Israel declared war on Hamas last year. The Israel-Iran enmity hasn't been eternal. Israel and Iran were allies till the 1979 Islamic Revolution in Iran. Then things changed. Today Iran does not recognize Israel's right to exist and seeks its eradication. 
based on Tehran's rhetoric, Israel believes Iran poses an existential threat. Iran has reportedly funded several attacks on Israel for decades, even before Israel's war in Gaza that started on the 7th of October last year. And its proxies that have stepped up strikes in the months since. So who are these proxies and allies that Iran is backing? And what objectives do they have? Since the Islamic Revolution of 1979, Iran has built up a network of groups across West Asia. This set of connections has lifted its regional hegemony. It has waged war against Israel and Western powers, especially the United States. Building the network that Iran calls the Axis of Resistance. This includes Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis of Yemen and armed groups in Syria and Iraq. Iran has reared these groups over decades to enable them to carry out attacks on Israel, as well as other countries such as Saudi Arabia, that Iran views as the enemy. Israel has tested the muscle of this alliance time and again by targeting its enemies in Lebanon, Syria, Yemen and even Iran. In July this year, Israel assassinated a top Hamas leader, Ismail Haniyeh, as Axis leaders assembled for Iran's presidential inauguration. The response from Iran and its allied militias raised questions about the network's power and coherence. Let's take a look at these proxies and their mechanisms. Hezbollah is Tehran's most loyal militant ally. Hezbollah militant group reportedly gets strong military and financial backing from Iran. Hezbollah, meaning party of God, was set up by Iran's Revolutionary Guards in 1982 to fight Israeli forces that had invaded Lebanon that year. The heavily armed group, also an influential political player, shares Iran's Shiite Islamist ideology and is widely regarded as more powerful than the Lebanese state. It has an arsenal of tens of thousands of rockets and highly trained fighters who have battled Sunni Islamists for years in Syria. Hezbollah carries out daily attacks against Israeli troops along the Lebanese-Israel border. The United States and other governments, including the US allied Gulf Arab countries, list Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. Reportedly, Iran provides an estimated $700 million to Hezbollah annually. Hezbollah also has intellectual alignment with Iran, as mentioned in its 1985 manifesto, where it pledged its allegiance to the then supreme leader of Iran and called for the destruction of Israel. Hezbollah, reportedly the world's most heavily armed non-state group, has grown into a powerful political force in Lebanon. It has expanded its operations into Syria and helped to train Iran-linked groups in Iraq, Yemen and elsewhere. Hezbollah began trading missiles across its border with Israel after the Hamas attacks on October 7. Though both sides were careful to moderate their exchanges to avoid a broader war, that approach broke down in July this year, when an Israeli airstrike killed Fuad Shukr, a senior Hezbollah commander in Beirut. This was a rejoinder to a rocket fired from Lebanon that killed children in an Israeli-controlled town. Then in September, a series of blasts rocked Lebanon when pagers and walkie-talkies exploded across the country. Sources say it was Israel that planted explosives in these devices. And then bombing sites in parts of Lebanon where Hezbollah holds dominance. 
One report says Israel has destroyed half of Hezbollah's long-range rocket inventory and decimated its command structure. Israel killed the group's longtime leader Hassan Nasrallah. Since 1992, Nasrallah has led the group through several wars with Israel and oversaw the party's transformation into a powerful player in Lebanon. Under Nasrallah, Hezbollah also helped develop the capabilities of fellow Iran-backed armed groups in Iraq and Yemen. Nabil Kaouk, who was the deputy of Hezbollah's Central Council, was also killed in an airstrike. He joined the militant group in its early days in the 1980s. Kaouk also served as Hezbollah's military commander in South Lebanon from 1995 till 2010. He had been seen as a potential successor to Nasrallah. Ibrahim Akil was a top commander and led Hezbollah's elite Radwan forces, which Israel has been trying to push further away from its border with Lebanon. He was also a member of its highest military body, the Jihad Council, and for years had been on the United States wanted list. Ahmad Webe was a commander of the Radwan forces and played a crucial role in developing the group since its formation. He was killed alongside Akil in an airstrike in Beirut's southern suburbs. Ali Karaki led Hezbollah's southern front, playing a key role in the ongoing conflict. The US described him as a significant figure in the militant group's leadership. Mohamed Sarour was the head of Hezbollah's drone unit, which was used for the first time in this current conflict with Israel. Under his leadership, Hezbollah launched exploding and reconnaissance drones deep into Israel. Ibrahim Kobesi led Hezbollah's missile unit. The Israeli military says Kobesi planned the kidnapping and murder of three Israeli soldiers at the northern border in 2000. Their bodies were returned as a prisoner swap with Hezbollah four years later. Nasrallah's second-in-command, Naim Qasim, is the most senior member of the organization. Qasim has been Hezbollah's deputy leader since 1991 and is among its founding members. Qasim is the only top official of the militant group left now. So what's next for Hezbollah? Iran also backs Palestinian Islamist groups Hamas and Islamic Jihad. Hamas carried out the deadly October 7 attack against Israel that sparked the present war in West Asia. Iran positions itself as a champion of Palestinian resistance against Israeli occupation. The founding charter of the Hamas in 1988 had called for destruction of Israel. Israel, the United States, the European Union, Canada, Egypt and Japan have named Hamas a terrorist group. In the ongoing war, Hamas has helped Iran realize its long-term ambition to encircle Israel with legions of paramilitaries, including other Palestinian factions and Lebanon's Hezbollah. Iran, meanwhile, reportedly provides Hamas at least 70 to 100 million dollars a year to sustain the conflict with Israel. Hamas has been trained to fight in crowded urban settings and uses a vast tunnel network, often called the Gaza Metro. In February this year, Israel said it had recovered documents from a tunnel in the Gaza Strip that suggests a substantial transfer of funds of over $150 million from Iran to Hamas between 2014 and 2020. Here are some operations against Hamas leaders and commanders, either claimed by or blamed on Israel. 
Mohamed Daif was killed after fighter jets struck in the area of Khan Yunis in Gaza in July. Daif was one of the founders of Hamas's military wing. The Qasim Brigades is believed to have been one of the masterminds of the October 7 attacks on southern Israel on the eve of the Gaza war. Ismail Haniyeh was killed in the early hours of July 31st in Tehran. He was reportedly shot by a missile that hit him directly in a state guesthouse where he was staying in Tehran. Israel didn't claim responsibility for the attack. An Israeli drone strike on Beirut's southern suburbs of Daniye killed Deputy Hamas Chief Saleh al-Aruri in January this year. Aruri was also the founder of the Hamas military wing, the Qasem Brigades. They are officially called Ansar Allah. The Houthis came from a branch of Shia Islam that ruled Yemen for centuries until the 1960s. They rose to prominence only in 2014 when they waged a brutal civil war against Yemeni government forces, backed by Saudi Arabia. Since the 7th of October last year, the Houthis began launching drones and missiles at Israeli-linked vessels in the Red Sea, threatening maritime traffic in one of the world's busiest waterways. Now look at the distance between Yemen and Israel. Yemen and Israel, separated by Saudi Arabia, are about 1600 kilometers apart at their nearest point. Then how is Yemen planning to strike Israel? One of the Houthis' newest weapons is the Tufan missile. With a range of up to 1950 kilometers, the missile places Israel within striking distance. Saudi Arabia and its allies accuse Iran of arming and training the Houthis. But the extent of the relationship is disputed and Tehran has denied funneling weapons into Yemen. In 2022, the U.S. seized thousands of weapons in the Arabian Sea. It said they likely came from a single port in Iran, signaling that Tehran was exporting arms to Yemen and elsewhere. The arms seized by the U.S. Navy included rocket launchers, machine guns and sniper rifles. However, Houthis called the allegations of Iranian weapons smuggling an illusion. Just two days after the death of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah in Lebanon, Israel launched a wave of airstrikes against Houthi rebels in Yemen, widening their offensive against Iran-backed militants. Syria is a key transit route for Iranian proxies between Iraq and Lebanon. The Syrian government, led by President Bashar al-Assad, is part of the axis of resistance, but has not played a direct role in the current conflict. However, Syrian territory has been an arena of escalation. After the Syrian civil war in 2011, Iran intervened to prop up President Bashar al-Assad. Deploying guards, advisors and fighters from Iraq, Pakistan and Afghanistan. The Syrian government has for decades been a close ally of Iran, and Iran-backed forces have been deployed across much of Syria since arriving more than a decade ago to aid Assad in the Syrian civil war. Syria also hosts fighters who are recruited in Iran and controlled by the Quds Force, one of five branches of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. The Revolutionary Guards also file at least two militias in Syria. The Fatemiyun Brigade, made up of Afghan refugees, and the Sainabiyun Brigade, made up of Pakistani refugees. The Iraqi militia ranks were originally drawn from Shiites who were tormented under Saddam Hussein's regime. They went into exile in Iran and returned after the US invasion toppled the dictator in 2003. 
Some returned, sharing Iran's antagonistic view of the United States, and soon formed armed groups. Shiite groups with ties to Iran emerged as powerful players in Iran after the US-led invasion, and developed militias with tens of thousands of rebels. The Popular Mobilization Force, or PMF, is a state-sanctioned grouping of Iraqi paramilitaries. The group is loyal to Iran and is closely tied to its revolutionary guards. It has flown off US bases in dozens of attacks in Iraq and Syria. The groups are designated terrorist organizations by the United States. Most recently, some of these groups have also targeted Israel, including multiple strikes since the killing of Nasrallah. Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Khamenei and senior military commanders in the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps have issued unifying guidance to all its different allies including Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Houthi rebels in Yemen, Hezbollah in Lebanon and Shia militias in Iraq and Syria. Before October 7, 2023, all these groups were ideologically opposed to Israel. But they were also fighting their own conflicts and were not rallying around supporting Hamas. Now they have all one common objective, defeating Israel. The question is, will Iran's axis of resistance be able to beat Israel? Or will Iran's allies collapse under Israel's attacks? In either case, the conflict in West Asia is spiraling and showing signs of growing dangerously out of control.